how to speed balls up off the bounce with your forehand. The safe strategy in pickleball, especially high tournament play, is attacking balls only that you get out of the air. If you can add this off the bounce dynamic to your game, it will elevate your skill and take you to the next level. I've been playing pickleball for over a year and a half now, and I've just recently discovered the mental checklist that you should be going over while attacking off of the bounce. After drilling it two hours a day for an entire week, I finally discovered what we should be doing in order for it to be successful. Now, you don't have to do any of the dirty work trying to figure it out yourself. Just watch this video. I promise you won't regret it. To start off, being able to attack first is super important. If you're playing Ben Johns and Colin Johns, if you just try to dink them to death, you're never going to win. Against better players, you need to initiate and attack first. This is what this shot looks like. The main thing that I've discovered from training this so much is this one thing. Without this, everything goes to the trash. It's when you do this shot, wherever the ball is, you have to get your outside leg behind the ball. So if the ball is bouncing here, I have to be like this when I do this shot. I cannot be like this. That is the number one thing that has changed my game from not hitting it into the net. The reason is, for this shot to be successful, your paddle tip has to be completely flat and down, completely down in order for you to generate enough spin to keep the ball in. If the ball's here and my leg is not behind it, it's impossible to get your wrist completely flat. See, I can't do it. As soon as I put my leg behind it, it's a much more natural, comfortable decision. When I was learning this shot, I was trying to speed the ball up like this from out here it's never going to work until that leg is behind the ball. The second thing, we have to fully commit when we hit this shot, meaning look at my wrist. When the ball comes, I cannot half swing. I need to fully use all of my power in my wrist and my forearm to hit this ball as quickly as possible. The reason is when I do this, the ball is going to go faster. And since I'm hitting so much spin, the faster it travels, the more it's going to dip in the court. If we half commit, the ball is gonna fly out. We need to whip it so it goes like that. The third thing that I've learned is we have to consciously loosen our grip on our paddle. So if I hit all of my shots, my dinks, my drops, my drives, with like a five out of 10 on tightness on my paddle, when I'm going to speed up this ball, when my paddle's here, I have to drop down to like a three. That extra looseness allows the ball to get up and over the net. If you're holding your paddle too tight, the ball is just gonna go into the bottom of the net because you don't have that whip on it. I'm gonna hit three of these balls. I want you to really pay attention to my paddle tip and my outside leg. My paddle tip will be completely down and my outside leg is going to be directly behind the ball. Woo! Those look great. Now I'm gonna do two balls where my leg is not behind the ball. I'm gonna have my leg like this, like I've done my entire life up until like two weeks ago. On both those balls, you could see both of them were more so like a Hail Mary. I'm just using all wrist and just trying to muscle it over, which is why one hit the net and one looked like it was going 20 feet out. Even me reviewing the film furthers my learning of, wow, if your foot is not behind that ball, good luck, it's not happening. I'm gonna show you now the pattern that I found works the best when using this speed up off the bounce. My success rate has been very good with it. Keep in mind, I'm lefty, so everything's wonky for the opponents, but I'll still share it with you anyway. It's when my opponent here is thinking cross court with my partner. Whenever my opponent hits a ball to the middle of the court, I'll come in and snag it and hit it back to that corner. And then on the next ball, 
if it comes back to that middle again, I get it, and then speed it up through the middle of the court. Since I just put the previous ball out wide, it has that guy on ice skates of which way I'm going and will open up the center of the court. That's my favorite combo for this shot. However, if you get a dead dink in the kitchen that you wanna speed up, it still works great. We just have to add one layer of deception that I'll go over now. That new skill we're gonna learn is called holding on our dinks. So look at me right now, I'm just hitting normal, easy dinks back and forth. However, if I wanna be deceptive throughout a match, watch my paddle. I wait that split second with my paddle tip down just like I was going to speed it up. Now, if I decide to pull that trigger, my partner or my opponent has no idea. So let's see. Woo! I want you to rewire your brain when it comes to a match, whether it's a rec play match or a tournament match. We want to shift our thinking to the game of chess. So what does that mean? Whatever I do early in the match will set up later in the match. So if I decide to do a weird shot, on the second point of the match, on the eighth point of the match, that's still gonna be in my opponent's head. Like, oh, he has that weird shot that could be coming. For example, if the first two points of a match, I hold a dink and then dink it back and then hold a dink and dink it back. Two points from now, if I hold a dink, I can speed it up because the guy hasn't seen that in my bag yet. Here's a prime example. Pretend this is the first point. Now pretend this is the second point. That's a prime example. With that middle dink, it's a super deadly shot. So the first one, I held and dinked it normal. The next one, I held and then sped it up. So now that gives me free reign to do whatever I want on the next point if I get that middle ball. As you saw, I got the middle ball. On the next point, I dinked it. Then, oh, he thinks I'm going middle because I just did that. Is it coming? Nope, inside out for a winner. If I just open your eyes to something new in pickleball, promise me, if you buy anything from carbonpickleball.com, when you check out, you type in the code TANNER for 10% off your entire order. That helps support me on my journey to become pro. This is the number one drill you can do to practice your speed ups off the bounce and you're holding for deception. You're gonna jump on the court with your training partner across from you, and you guys are both gonna be dinking the whole box, trying to move each other around. However, the twist is, you're gonna designate one player as the attacker, so they can only speed up off of the bounce, and the other player can only counter and work on their defense. This helps this player learn their trickery and setting up their shots on what works and what doesn't. Woo, got him. Ah. Oh. How do you feel, Ridley? I feel that I've been smoked in this game by the deceptiveness of Tanner. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Follow me to see a video like this every single week. I left everything in New Jersey and moved to Florida to make pickleball a full-time thing. I drill three hours minimum every single day and play as many tournaments as I can. On this channel, I bring what I learn to you guys so you can get it through the eyes of someone who's a true student of the game and trying to become the best.